Oh, and we're, we're rolling. So, so, hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. This is my bodacious cousin, Lindsay. Oh, hey. Lindsay is my first cousin, huh? first cousin once removed. Don't ask me, I don't know. She's much older than me, even mm -hmm. though, mm -hmm. no, she's much younger than me. But she, and she lives in Tokyo as well. And she is usually a fairly big reader not recently but we're here mm -hmm. to talk about books so Yay. so what's going on with you and books these days cuz cuz lately i've been working the roll doll i'm having a trip down memory lane roll doll yeah because my darling cousin here gave me a full box set of roll doll books so i've been working through them lately the Japanese evening's been cold, so I get in the bathtub and bring a rolled doll book, and I just read about Matilda. <laughs> wow. So what's your favorite rolled doll novel? Oh, that's tricky. Um, or you've been having a different experience rereading them than you did. Yeah. So with, from your memory, what was your favorite? Uh, I always really liked Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, of course. Um, James and the Giant Peach. Oh, and the wonderful story of Henry Sugar and Six More. I mm. loved that. Yeah, but there's some that I read when I was a child, like the BFG, that I remember really liking, but I read it, reread it now. And... It stands for Big Fucking Gay, right? You know it. <laughs> oh, by the way, we, we've been drinking for about five hours, just so you know. This is a tipsy tag. Not a tag. This is a tipsy video. And have you reread any of them that were a pleasant surprise that you loved more or loved period matilda was really good and reading rereading charlie and the chocolate factory i'm about halfway through right now and i'm just loving it it's so good i haven't read so any roald dahl novels i remember the movie from the 1970s when that's about when I in when I was a when I was a childhood. Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Uh, so why are you loving it so much? It's just so good. It's so creative, and it's dark. It it is it is a little dark. It's pretty dark for a children's book, and you know it's it's kind of joking. Like, will he be okay? Yeah, if he doesn't hit the boiler, <laughs> you know. It it is actually pretty pretty intense for kids, but. No, they're, they're good. You gave me... Do we have it? You gave me a book of his short stories. Oh, yeah. I put it down. Oh, want you want to grab it? it? Yeah, I'll get and it. And if you want to talk... I'll edit this out. But if you want to talk about the million dollar boy, we bring that one too. Oh, yeah, I'll bring that. If you want to. So this is volume one of his collected short stories. And these are adult stories, aren't they? Yes, very much so. And have you read any of these? I actually don't know that I've read any of these in this collection. Volume 1 is 1944 to 1953, so you were quite young back then. I've aged very well. Um, yeah, no, I hadn't read any of Roald Dahl's um, novels for or short stories for adults until quite recently, and having gr read all of his children's books growing up, it was rather shocking what... Um, they're pretty dark. I mean, I love it, but they're pretty dark. His life had some periods mm -hmm. of darkness. He, what was he, a prisoner of war in Germany? No, I was completely incorrect. The controversy that I believe vaguely remembered was not about Roald Dahl at all. It was about P.G. Woodhouse. I'll put a link to an article about the Woodhouse controversy, but... I will leave much, much of my commentary in, but it doesn't pertain to it doesn't pertain to doll at all. It's about P.G. Woodhouse. And then he kind yeah, of he was he was shot down somewhere because he was a he was a pilot in the war. Yeah, and then he he was shot down in Africa. He kind though. of turned, did some German propaganda that some people in the UK have never forgiven it for. But I'm not sure what any of the rest of us might have would have done. But have I got that right? I don't know. I don't know that. But now that I have two iPads, I can just check shit out and edit edit stuff out, and nobody <laughs> knows. That everybody thinks I got it all in my head. Oh my gosh! 
And how do you pronounce his name? Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. I think I've always thought it was Dahl. Okay. Is it Dahl? How about his first name? Roald. Roald Dahl. That's what I thought. Maybe I'm just making this stuff up. I no, my iPad is... It's on the fritz. On the fritz. Maybe it needs to be charged. No, it shouldn't be. Okay, well, we'll skip that. I think there was some controversy. Poison. I'm sure there was controversy. Let's see. Is there a bio here? That's cute. Aww, nothing, puppies. Nothing controversial about that. Aww, puppies. But no, I think he was uh, shot down. and mm -hmm. He was shot down. And I think he did some German propaganda radio. And his reputation never quite recovered. If I'm wrong, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Same birthday. It was my last birthday, my yes. 30, 32nd birthday. You gave me this novel. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing was, already I already had a copy, but I like this fabulously gay pink edition better, so I gave my old copy to you. And we're planning to do a buddy read. Yes, we're going to do this. What do you think about March? March sounds lovely. Okay. I might go to Kagoshima, but we'll figure it out. A General Theory of Oblivion by Jose Eduardo... Agualusa, and he is a Angolan writer. He is obviously of Spanish extraction, but uh, he is, has lived all or most of his life in... Was that you? Wasn't it an earthquake? It'd be fun to have a cousinly earthquake on, on camera, <laughs> eh? Jesus. We'd probably both miss it and drink wine. <laughs> I love the description on the back. It talks about it, the, the setting is the eve of Angolan independence and a woman named Luda bricks herself into her apartment. She builds bricks and where she will remain for the next 30 years living off vegetables and pigeons, burning her furniture and books to stay alive. Could you burn your books to stay alive? No, mm -hmm. but yeah. it sounds like what a lot of people might want to do in the Trump era, <laughs> except for the books part. So looking forward to doing a cousinly buddy read of this it's next year. It's going to be good. Uh, what did you, oh, we had our first book fight. Yeah. This fall, this autumn, this fall, I use my books on a regular basis for my booktube channel and Lindsay had so many of my books that she'd borrowed and so I sent her a really awkward what's the word I used in the recent message a uh uh I don't know what I did with my tortured uh really awkward message to say I please bring all my books back by January because you know I need my books on a regular basis for my YouTube channel and I know you've got a bunch and blah 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 and I hope it's you don't mind me asking and la 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 it rambled a little. Just a bit. And she wrote back and said, well, I think I've only got one. I said, oh, really? But that's the problem for me. I don't remember who I loaned books to. And the one that you had was a, a book that, anyway. So I got, she brought the one book back and we're good. Are we good? Golden. We're yes. golden. No problems here. Unless I take something from the shelves as I'm going home going tonight. So uh, we worked that out. Mm -hmm. We worked that out. Now we're besties again. Back to being kissing cousins. Mwah. Mwah. Mm -hmm. And what else have we got here? No, um, uh, not enough about what we got. So yeah. you've been reading. What have you been reading? Um, Let's see. I've been reading this book. I've been look I was so looking forward to this book that came out called Flaneuse. Flaneuse, yeah. Yeah. Who's that one by? It was Lauren Elkin, I yep. want to say. Something like that. And it was about, it was supposed to be about women walking the cities of the world and exploring the cities of the world. And one of the chapters was about Tokyo. You know, we live in Tokyo. We walk all over Tokyo. We do. And Tokyo was super walkable. So yes. I was really, really excited to find out about other women who've walked Tokyo. And I started reading this book and... The first few chapters, I kind of figured, okay, this is not what I thought it was going to be because it was talking about, um, like the chapter about London at the beginning was talking about Virginia Woolf. So it's talking about it through a literature perspective, okay. which is not what 
I really, I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but it's not what I signed <coughs> up for. So I was like, well, that's okay. That's where this is going to go. That's where it's going to go. But then I got to the chapter on Tokyo and her boyfriend got sent to Tokyo. So she followed him here. And then the rest of the chapter, except for a few paragraphs at the end, is just her bitching about Tokyo and blah, blah, blah. I can't learn Japanese. Well, hiragana is the is the system that women use, and they wrote novels in that. It's because they weren't taught kanji. That's no excuse to have... Oh, women weren't educated. They're, oh, that's okay. I can use hiragana because it's the, it's the characters of women. Oh, just because it's the first time in your life you're a visible minority and oh, I can't handle it. I can't assimilate. Oh, she was just bitching the whole time and just decided she'd go and hang out in Nopongi at Starbucks and just, I can't walk in this city. Maybe you want to smack her face. I've never quit on a book in my life, but this one I'm like. You don't bail on books? Uh -uh. Are you sure you're my cousin? <laughs> We've been having a conversation about <laughs> bailing and not bailing on books that predates my appearance on BookTube. Mm -hmm. That one almost brought you to the, mm -hmm. to the edge, but you did finish it. No, I'm, I'm still in the middle of it. Uh -huh. I'm reading it in small doses now, interspersed with about three or four rolled doll books. This is what's getting me through. Flanous. I'm trying to think of a witty pun to make about flanous. I, I, I can't. So I'm... she references Lost in Translation several times in the book on Tokyo, in the chapter on Tokyo. Yeah, the movie. She references it several times in the chapter, and honestly, the chapter that she wrote is like a shitty version of Lost in Translation. So if you've seen the movie, just watch the movie and don't read the book. Did, um, you, did you like the movie? No, I didn't like the movie. That's interesting. I mean, I didn't see all of it because I was watching on a plane, and I was like. I don't like movies anyway, so whatever. Yeah, we're kind of like in that way. Yeah. I don't hate movies, but I don't really care about movies. Yeah, I'm pretty indifferent unless there's eye candy. There was no eye candy in that one. What's the name of the actor? Bill Murray. Not much in the eye candy department. No, no. A couple of cute Japanese guys. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. This is a book of mine that Lindsay did borrow, and she actually returned it. Imagine that. <laughs> An African in Greenland by Tete Michelle Pomassi. And I love this. Did you? Did yeah, you it was like really it? good. Yeah. And it's a memoir of, he was, he's to Togoese. Mm -hmm. It's from the African country of Togo, which is a French speaking, well, I assume they have their own native language, but it's it was a French you're nodding, and I think there's an earthquake. That's a power nod. <laughs> <laughs> it's enthusiasm. <laughs> and you know what I remember the most about this? I think I remember everything about this. NYRB Books book. I remember the opening chapters of his life in Togo. Remember the he got bit by the yes. snake? Yes. And he got a witch doctor, and there was this mm -hmm. curse and all this stuff. It read like a freaking novel. Oh, yeah, I didn't really incredible. want him to leave his home country because I wanted I know. that to continue. But this should have been three or four books. He should have just expanded on it and kept. But you know what I loved? He he's browsing in like a Salvation Army thrift shop or whatever the equivalent would yeah, be yeah, in yeah. Togo, and he finds books about Greenland, and it captures his imagination, and he incubates that dream, and he it takes him. Did it take him years? To years get to get his shit together, yeah, he... ducks in a row. He worked, and he worked. He lived he in worked. Europe for a couple of years. Like he lived in this place, yes. worked until he had money and had learned enough language skills, and then he moved up to Europe and then worked and learned more language skills. And he and he eventually gets there. And you know, as a reader, that just really resonated for me. Oh, it's yeah. like you can actually just be browsing in a book, yes. and you know, it becomes a dream that changes your life. And he spent at least a year, but maybe longer. Year and a half, two years maybe. All and together. so he went to, to Greenland, and there, the poor African bugger, <laughs> and had many adventures. And did it make you want to go to Greenland? Yeah, kind of did. Really? I mean, I don't want to be there when it's. I don't. I mean, I left Canada for a reason. It's freaking freezing. Um, <laughs> not that Tokyo's really that much warmer, but um, temperature-wise, yeah, okay. But it's buildings aren't heated, so gross. Yeah, no central heating. But um, 
yeah no there were there were a lot of things that I wanted to see the scenery and I'm I wanted sure it's to beautiful. see and I love sharks and I mean there's the cold water Greenland sharks I want to kind of try to find but um no just the stories about it and I I was really interested in the communities and the people and yeah it was interesting but it made me think uh I've read the book I really enjoyed it I don't want to go there <laughs> I don't need to go to Greenland. I'm Canadian. I don't need to go to Greenland. But what a what a marvelous memoir. One of the best oh, yeah. travel was, books I've ever read. It was amazing. Now, he's... Now, this is just completely dead, so I can't look any shit up. Should I grab so. my phone? No, I don't need it, really. It's okay. It was translated from the French by James Kirkup. And if I'm remembering correctly, so I can edit this out if I'm completely wrong, James Kirkup is a gay novelist. Hey, well, I make the same mistake every time I talk about this book and its translator on BookTube. No! The translator, James Kirkup, was a translator and a poet, I think, and he died uh, as a very old man, 2009 or something, and the gay novelist that I continually confuse him with is James Kirkwood, the author of P.S. Your Cat is Dead. Who wrote... The novel from about 1970 called P.S. Your Cat is Dead. About a, a, about a, a man, a straight guy who comes home from work one day and there's a gay burglar burglarizing his apartment and he, uh, he ties the gay burglar up on the dining room table exposing his buttocks and then the rest of the novel happens in that position. <laughs> But why would it be called P.S. Your Cat is Dead? That's I th awful. I, th I think somehow the cat died just before the guy got home. Oh, no. I don't think the, the, robber, the gay robber uh, killed the cat, but something bad happened. I don't know. I don't remember that, but I just remember the buttocks. Who cares about the cat? We got bare buttocks. All I miss about Canada is my kitty cat. That's awful. <laughs> anyway. Uh, do you have any more books over there? No? No, I just have real dull over here. Oh, there's someone behind me. Yeah. Oh, I have this one. Ah, Yes. The one, the in, one in a million boy by Monica Wood. We both did this on audio. Ooh. I'm not big on audio. I don't have the attention span for it. If I'm not actually reading myself, I'm kind of one of those people that goes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. But this one, I focused on. Yeah. Because it was good. It was a marvelous audio narration. I don't remember mm -hmm. who did it. I can't remember either, but and it was so well done. How would you describe that novel? It's difficult to describe. Mm hmm It's... I think I chose not to read much about it going in, so I didn't really know what was coming. So I, I, I think as it unfolded, it was... Curiosity leading to utter devastation would be the good way to describe how I felt about it. The two main, there's three main characters. One is, uh, how old is he? Nine years old? Eleven years old? Eleven years old, I think. A boy, uh, and he's never named, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. And he's, he's a boy, boy scout. And he seems to be somewhere on the autism spectrum. Yeah. He, uh, he makes fabulous lists. Mm -hmm. He counts things off. He counts things off. Uh, he's exuberant and passionate about life. And he... Uh, he does volunteer work for this lady, uh, Una Vitkus. I can still yes. remember her name, Una Vitkus. And yes. how old is she? N how old was she? 104. 104. <laughs> and he does volunteer work in her yard and stuff for one of his Boy Scout badges. And this is not a spoiler because it happens in the first 25 pages. Suddenly that be beautiful little boy drops dead of some weird ailment mm -hmm. illness mm -hmm. freak genetic something something yeah freak genetic heart problem heart problem yeah. so then his father who is divorced from his mother and has had never been able to make a connection with his son with the autism spectrum weird list making blah 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 but is in and of himself a really lovable person mm -hmm. but wasn't a very good dad to his son yeah he f fulfills the rest of his dead son's volunteer commitment with Una Vitkus and yeah. becomes friends with her and gets to know his son through this old lady's eyes. It's just amazing. I'm starting to get all yes. verbal. I'm just 
remembering it. So the the son decided that this this old lady should try to break Guinness Book records. Yes. So they they start working on this and trying to figure out okay what records can you break the oldest person wow they lived pretty pretty old okay the oldest person who's done this the oldest person who's done that the oldest person who had a driver's license so that's one thing that they they decide to aim for but of course this the the boy dies so then his, his father steps in and is like okay we'll get you your driver's license and you know the father steps in after his son is gone and yeah. tries to help this, you know, helps Unavikis and his now deceased son fulfill this dream goal, that they'd, goal, this dream yeah. that they'd built together. It's just really, yeah. oh. really. I thought maybe the this. I mean, Unavikis lived a long, long life, but I thought her backstory might have been a little bit too long. But who cares? It it was a beautiful novel that I absolutely loved. Published in twenty sixteen, I think, and not enough people on BookTube have read it, so. Take it from us. You need to check it. Oh, it's beautiful. This is one that you have read and I haven't. The Sisters Brothers by yes. Patrick D Patrick DeWitt. So, mm -hmm. did you like it? Um, I liked it in a lot of ways. Other ways, I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> Tell us the details. The details. What? I'm... I'm not good at violence for the sake of violence. I'm pretty... I'm pretty high on the empathetic scale, so I like I can't watch um, I can't watch suspense movies because when even when they kill like those minion guys, I'm always like, but they had a family. Someone loved them. Their mother raised them up, and maybe they went astray, but somebody loves them. Oh, the same way. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, in that sense, when they're kind of killing willy nilly, I'm a, I'm a little bit upset about things. But um, the one of them really has. A conscience and it was really interesting reading things and as even as he's doing these really horrible things with his brother he's just at the same time a surprisingly deep thinker and it was I don't know it just it was really surprising to me in a number of ways but yeah I didn't I did not see I still don't know if I liked it or oh, not interesting do you remember how long ago it was you read it oh when did I read it it was I want to say two years ago. Okay. He's um, had two more since then. I can't remember the second one, but the third one just came out this year. French something. He's done pretty well, I think, in terms of um, reception and sales. and. Isn't he new? Oh, he's born in British Columbia. I yeah, thought he was Maritimes. He's... Oh. Maybe not. Oh, I just knew Canadian. Canadian. I didn't know. He lives, in, uh, he lives in Oregon now. Well, I did the page 112 test. I liked page 112. How was page 112? I have I have a different copy of the book, so my page 112 will be different. I can't really read these page numbers. Is that page 112? That's page 192. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't see. Gosh. The lighting isn't very good, and I've drank a lot tonight. Whatever. Page 112. Are you ready? Mm. Which Which part are we reading? All of it? It was a head that invited violence. Now he was weeping in, in earnest, with bubbles of mucus blooming from his nostrils, and no sooner had the right nostril's bubble exploded than another took shape in the left. I explained we were in no position to care for children, that our way was a swift and dangerous one. A speech likely made for nothing, the boy being so engrossed with his own sadness, I do not think he heard my words. At last... Fearful I might hurt him if he did not cease his mewling, I walked the boy across the stream to the prospector's ca camp and pulled the tobacco pouch from my saddlebag. Showing him the gold, I told him, This will get you back to your home and your girl, if you can avoid having your skull knocked from your shoulders. Sounds like the kind of day I had last Tuesday. <laughs> Whew. The writing's good. The writing is good. Yep. It's It's, um... It was really well written. Yeah, and I did, I did so, enjoy it and see, get into see it. See that there's some violence there, just a wee it's, bit. It's it's just just. A, I feel like there was something about eyeballs. I'm really squeamish about eyeballs, so I don't know. Yes, I remember. But, yeah, I don't like eyeballs. So, uh, what's the word? Uh, Rand a uh, hot take? What's it? Power questions? What do you, on TV shows, interviews, they give you fifty questions in twenty five seconds. What's that called? Oh. Hot take, hot. 
Don't ask me to think in English when I've had this much wine. Anyway, I'm going to ask you some quick questions to finish. Oh, okay. Best book you... Well, it might... <laughs> I might do 75 minutes of quick questions. Okay. Best book you read this year? Best book I read this year? Shit, I don't know. Um, what have I read this year? Best book you've read recently? Best book I've read recently? It's probably something by Tamora Pierce, to be honest. I think I've read a lot of Tamora Pierce this year. Now, that's a familiar name, but is that a mystery novelist? No, um, young adult fantasy. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, what books are she most known for? Um, her tor her series about the the realm of Tortal. And what I like most about her is that her protagonists are all women who solve the problems and kick ass. Oh. And it straight up brings up things like menstruation it brings up issues about birth control and just straight up addresses them everybody deals with it and moves on it doesn't be like oh my gosh someone's gonna sleep with somebody else i mean it's a fantasy novel so it's like okay i'm gonna go get my pregnancy charm just in case and everybody's like oh well you're that age so yeah that's a good idea just in case good to be safe and you know it's it's nice that it's like okay safe sex women are tough women can solve the problems and What's to be afraid of about menstruation? Oh, awesome. So, yeah, Love they're that. awesome. Now, that uh, reminds me of a book you told me. Are you reading it or did you just finish reading it? A nonfiction book. Oh, I just bought it. I have already bought it. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, my gosh. What was it called? What was it? Let's let's talk about my uterus. Let's. Oh, my gosh. Even your iPad isn't like uteruses. Uteri? What's a plural? <gasps> when it's a gay man, I'm not sure. The endings are different when you're gay. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, um, I'll put the title in later. Still, t tell us a bit about the book. I'll put the title and the, the cover in. So, I'm just really excited about it because she was she's an author who was dealing with a lot of pain issues. I think she ended up being diagnosed with endometriosis. But it was talking about her battles trying to get someone to believe that she was in pain. Right. And believe that, you know, this is real. Because even female doctors don't necessarily believe that this is a problem for a lot of women. And she was complaining about even not even enjoying sex because because of the pain she was having. Right, and her right. doctor didn't believe her until she brought her boyfriend. And her boyfriend said this was a problem. And then they took her seriously. And then they took her seriously. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I have my own issues with um, menstrual pain and things like that. And it's... You know, it's it's awful, and yeah. people don't take it seriously. And I think if men had the same issues where they were debilitated and lying on the ground several days a month... Hello, so that, Viagra so versus it. whatever medicine there is for that, for women's, right? Covered by medical insurance, blah, 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 <laughs> fucking blah. Okay, time for a refill. We'll keep going. We need more alcohol. Uh, next question is... Uh, how do you feel about Russian literature? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where my phone is. My belt is twisted and I've lost my phone. Life is hard. Oh, really? <laughs> do you remember when you last had it? I thought it was in my pocket of my jacket. Well, we had to pause the video for several minutes until the we could find the lost phone. Stay tuned for part two, the even drunker conversation, coming soon.